radius. So this is an example of what we can do with chemistry. So this is a mind map that one of the other students has sent me about chemistry. It's a little hard to see when you're doing it like this, but you can see that they've done some basic chunking already. They've done some basic chunking. So we can see that there is clearly this um, reaction example here. And then what I'm really focusing on is how we can optimize something like this, which is inherently not super memorable and can actually seem quite overwhelming when in reality is actually very, very simple. So here's something that we can do. We can use our understanding of spatial arrangement and our idea of chunking to create a, a representation of this that's a, that's a lot easier. So let's examine this a little bit a little bit more closely with a more critical eye, really looking at ways that we can chunk it. So in this case, what we're going to be doing is, I know I talk about chunking by importance all the time, but it's not always possible to chunk something by importance, especially when you're getting down to the fine details. Chunking by importance is great for creating your logical framework. It's great for building a rapid schema of the information. It's great for things like pre-study. Um, it's impossible to, to do a good mind map really without having the chunking by importance related stuff. Anyone that's listening to this right now and isn't clear about the chunking by importance, I just encourage you to watch some of the other videos that I have on this, talk about it extensively. Um, in this case, we're going to be using a different type of chunking, which is simply just chunking by commonalities. Um, and it could be any type of commonality, but we're just going to find the way, the way that works. So let's just have a look at this, right? We can see that here we've got five different types of reactions. And can you guys generally agree that um, this is quite a common way that you, you, know, you, would, you would write your reactions? You know, most people, if you look at the notes of, of most people, they would probably write their notes in this way right uh yeah. however there are other ways that we can do this so for example when we look at this okay this is all a react all five of these are just reactions that involve acid they all involve a metal either by itself or with something else attached to it they all produce a salt okay and they all produce either water or, or hydrogen so some hydrogen con containing compound so we can effectively chunk this so that acid is all the same metal is all the same, salt is all the same, and hydrogen containing something. Now let's look at the differences. The difference is that by itself it produces the hydrogen gas. When there is an hydroxide, it produces the water. When there is an oxide, it produces the water. Carbonate produces the water. Hydrocarbonate produces the water. So there is a water if there is a presence of oxygen. Metal plus anything with oxygen produces a water instead of just a normal hydrogen gas. And if we think about that, from a conceptual point of view, obviously that makes sense. What's the other difference? The other difference is that in the presence of carbon, carbonate or hydrocarbonate, there's a carbon dioxide added as well. And that's it. So these are it's just acid plus metal equals a soap plus hydrogen containing compound. If there's oxygen, that hydrogen becomes water. If there is a carbon, that also adds a carbon dioxide. And we can think about that from an ionic point of view how that would make sense. So we can instead uh, represent this much more simply. Instead of having that long list, we can have the exact same amount of information presented in a way that looks something like this. Acid plus metal and then something, right? Let's do the something in blue. And that something can either be carbon or it can be oxygen, right? Then we could have some examples here underneath. We could have hydroxide, um, or we could just have the oxide, right? Or the carbon, we could have the hydrocarbon, uh, or we could have it as a uh, just, just carbonate or hydrocarbonate, whatever we want. Uh, but the idea is that we are, we're, we're chunking it based on the fact that there's a carbon or an oxygen in this, in this blank box. And then that leads to, in all cases, the salt plus hydrogen containing something. Okay, and that something is either water if there is an oxygen, or if there isn't, uh, if there's a if there's a carbon, that creates a CO two. Done. All five reactions. That's all five reactions expressed right there. Acid plus metal equals salt plus hydrogen. If there's an oxygen, it creates water. If there's a carbon, it creates carbon dioxide. Right? All five of those are done. Uh, and we've been able to create a much cleaner shape out of that as well. So this shape is in itself inherently 
going to be memorable, right? And it's simplified. We've thought about it more. We've had to process the information more in our brain. So therefore, it's easier to, to, to understand. It's going to have a higher level of retention. We're more likely to encode it because of the fact that we've used our cognitive load and our brain power to process the information. So it's more likely to be retained. Um, it's a simplified understanding, so it's easier to organize and fit together. Examples are uh, easy to use and swap into this. Uh, and then we can obviously sub, you know, complement that with a basic conceptual understanding from an ionic point of view in terms of what's happening. So when we look at these reaction examples down here, right, we can see that it's really the same, right? We've got a ion, ion creating the compound here plus the hydrogen gas, which is, you know, soap plus hydrogen gas. We can see that we've got ion, ion creating soap plus it's got an O, right? So that is obviously going to go with the hydrogen, create the water, done. We've got the soap being formed, calcium sulfate, done. We've got a, uh, we've got the oxygen, so it's going to create the water with the H2, H2O. Uh, and we know that there's a carbon, so that's going to then react to create the CO2. Easy, easy as that. And we don't even need to really even be writing all of this example down here in terms of how it works ionically, because when we have an understanding about how this works from a more conceptual point of view, plus this, we can sort of we can sort of skip that whole stage because we have both that uh, conceptual and in terms of like memory optimized understanding of it, right? Is that a question for you guys? You know, is that a way of thinking about and writing notes for chemistry reactions that is new for you that you haven't really um looked at before? No, I think like. I haven't really thought about it that much, but like I would normally just kind of simplify it, but like not to the extent that you have done. But yeah, it's it's really useful. Cool. Yeah, That's... I would probably say the same as well. But I think my main like kind of problem with chemistry, I would say, comes from organic chemistry, with this kind of like, you know, many times it's not just like one reaction or like one type of reaction. You have to remember it's like one reaction after another after another. And they're all kind of like interconnected in a way. And I don't know how to like super simplify that. Uh, you can actually apply it. So I've done the same process for organics multiple times before. And you can actually apply the exact same thing for organics. It doesn't look the same because obviously the reactions are different. But the process is sort of the same. You're trying to find the underlying trends and simplify those trends as much as possible. So it's about trying to figure out like, you know, if, if there is um, like... Uh, you know, it's about trying to figure out if you're in a situation where there's an intermediary product uh, and then that is linking together from from something so let's say you're going from an alkane to a, a ketone you know that's not a single step reaction um, understanding basically that hmm any time that there is a hydroxide a more electronegative ion attached to it that's most likely going to be the site of where the reaction happens because you understand that the bonds are not going to be shared as equally in that type of situation. That means that you know that in any situation, the intermediary is always going to be uh, wherever that electronegative kind of weakness is. So theoretically, you should always be able to uh, chain things that way. And actually, if you look at your reaction schemes, you'll see that actually that's always the case. Your intermediary step is always just a step that creates a point of electronegative you know, weakness where the bond can be introduced or replaced or substituted out. And then when you see it that way, you'll see that actually all the intermediary steps in the reaction scheme kind of share the same, you know, the same idea, you know, reacting from a double bond and breaking the double bond. That's a very common pattern that you'll see. Having a uh, hydroxide in there, replacing the hydroxide and changing that into a double bond. That's a very common pattern that you'll see. And then you can start linking them together and simplifying those re um, reactions that way. And there's lots of different ways that you could you could cut this. Yeah. Okay. I guess I never like thought about it this way, so I might spend some time kind of simplifying stuff like that. Thank yeah, you. it will take some time, especially when you're first starting to think about. Chemistry is often not taught conceptually in this way, but um, it makes chemistry a lot easier. Like chemistry is actually really. Have you have you ever noticed that? Um, you actually really get kind of two types of people. It's like some people who really struggle with chemistry and some people just find it really easy. And that's often because people that get chemistry, like they actually get it. They understand how it works. So the reactions are semi kind of obvious to them. 
Whereas other people are just straight up memorizing and trying to rote learn the reactions and then it, nothing really makes sense. It's not, a lot of people will go through chemistry, sometimes doing very well at, at a high school level, um, not actually understanding why anything happens. They never get an intuitive mm. understanding of chemistry. Uh, and that's obviously, uh, you know, can be quite a weakness and, and really time inefficient as well through rote learning. Thank you.